Hello, Rock Spring Elementary. It's Mrs. Blaylock back with another book of the month. This month, the story is called The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. I think you'll like it. It's unique in the fact that it's a true story about a boy who lived in Africa. Before we read the story, I'll read Mrs. Gilstrap's letter to you, and you'll learn a little bit about the plot and the characters. And I'll also show you a map of Africa where William lived, and let's get started. Mrs. Gilstrap says, Dear students, the title of this book made me stop and reread it. The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. I've tried to harness an animal before, and believe me, it was not an easy task. How on earth do you harness the wind? There are different definitions to the word harness. Webster's Dictionary defines the word as to place a set of straps on an animal or to control and make use of. Which definition do you think this story uses? In the story, William lived in Africa in a poor village. His family had barely enough food to survive and no money. William had to quit school because in his country, one had to pay to go to high school. Although he didn't get to go to school, he continued to go to the library to learn. You will have to read the rest of the book to see what William learned and how he turned his learning into something powerful. This book is based on a true story. William was born in 1987 in Malawi, Africa. He was 14 when this happened. As you read, put yourself in William Kamkwamba's shoes. Would you have been as inventive or took as much initiative as he did? Happy reading. Love, Mrs. Gilstrap. And again, before we start reading the book, I want to show you a map of Africa. Country that you see in red is Malawi. This is a picture of William today. Although he was 14 when the story happened, he is now 22 and you can see a picture in the background of a windmill. That should give you some clue as to what this story may be about. So let's start reading. In a small village in Malawi where people had no money for lights, Nightfall came quickly and hurried poor farmers to bed. But for William, the darkness was best for dreaming. In a small village in Malawi, where people had no money for lights, nightfall came quickly and hurried poor farmers to bed. But for William, the darkness was best for dreaming. He dreamed of building things and taking them apart, like the trucks with bottle cap wheels parked under his bed, and pieces of radios that he'd crack open and wonder, if I can hear the music, then where is the band? His grandpa's tales of magic also whispered in the pitch black of his room. Witch planes passed through the window while ghost dancers twirled around the room as if a hundred men were inside their bodies. At dawn in the fields, William scanned the maze rows for magical beings, then wondered as a truck rumbled past, how does its engine make it go? Pay attention where you'll throw that hoe, his father shouted. You'll cut off your foot. For all its power over dancers and flying things, magic could not bring the rain. Without water, the sun rose angry each morning and scorched the fields, turning the maize into dust. Without food, Malawi began to starve. Soon, William's father gathered the children and said, from now on, we eat only one meal per day. Make it last. In the evenings, they sat around the lantern and ate their handful, watching hungry people pass like spirits along the roads. Money also disappeared with the rain. Papani, his father said, I am sorry. You will have to drop out of school. Now William stood on the road and watched the lucky students pass, alone, 
with the monster in his belly and the lump in his throat. For weeks he sulked under the mango tree, until he remembered the library down the road, a gift from the Americans. He found science books filled with brilliant pictures. With his English dictionary close by, William put together how engines moved those big trucks and how radios pulled their music from the sky. But the greatest picture of all was a machine taller than the tallest tree with blades like a fan. A giant pinwheel? Something to catch magic. Slowly he built the sentence. Windmills can produce electricity and pump water. He closed his eyes and saw a windmill outside his home, pulling electricity from the breeze and bringing light to the dark valley. He saw the machine drawing cool water from the ground, sending it gushing through the thirsty fields turning the maize tall and green. Even when farmers' prayers for rain went unanswered, the windmill was more than a machine. It was a weapon to fight hunger. Majesty Amempho, he whispered, I will build electric wind. In the junkyard, pieces appeared like rusted treasures in the tall grass, a tractor fan, some pipe, and bearings and bolts that required every muscle to remove. Tonga, he shouted to the birds and spiders, holding up his prize. But as William dragged his medals home, people called out, This boy is Masala. Only crazy people play with trash. After many weeks, William arranged his pieces in the dirt, a, bro a broken bicycle, rusted bottle caps, and plastic pipe, even a small generator that powered a headlight on a bike. For three days, he bolted, banged, and tinkered while chickens squawked and dogs barked, and neighbors shook their heads saying, What's Masala doing now? His cousin Jeffrey and his best friend Gilbert soon appeared. Muli Wanji, they greeted. Can we help with the electric wind? Grab your pangas and follow me, he said, and took them into the forest. Together they swung their sharp blades into the trunks of blue gum trees, then hammered them together to make the tower. Standing atop, William shouted, Bring it up! While the boys tugged and heaved, a crowd gathered below and gazed at this strange machine that now leaned and wobbled like a clumsy giraffe. Some giggled, others teased, but William waited for the wind. Like always, it came. First a breeze, then a gusting gale. The tower swayed and the blades spun around. With sore hands once slowed by hunger and darkness, William connected wires to a small bulb which flickered at first, then surged as bright as the sun. Tonga, he shouted. I have made electric wind. Washita, a man yelled, well done. As the doubters clapped and cheered, William knew he had just begun. Light could not fill empty bellies, but another windmill could soak the dry ground, creating food where once there was none. Majesty a fepo. Electric wind can feed my country, William thought. In 
And that was the strongest magic of all. All right, now I'd like to share a short video with you where you can listen to William speak about his invention and see a few pictures of his actual windmill in his home in Africa. William, hi. Good to see you. So, um, we've got a picture, I think. Where is this? This is my home. I, this is where I live. Where? What country? In, in Malawi, Kasungu. In Kasungu. Yeah, Malawi. Okay. Now, now you're 19 now? Yeah, I'm 19 years now. Five years ago, you had an idea. What, what was that? Uh, I want to make a windmill. A windmill? Yeah. And so, what, to power, like, for, for lighting and stuff? Yeah. So what did you do? How, how did you realize that? Uh, after I drove out from school, I went to library, and I read a book titled Using Energy, and I get information about windmill, and I try and I made it. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, So you copied, you, you, you exactly copied the design in the book? Ah, no. I changed. <laughs> what happened? Uh, in fact, a design of the window that it, it was in the book, it have got four uh, three plates and mine have got four plates. The, the book had three, yours had four? Yeah. And, and you made it out of what? Um, I made four plates just because I want to increase power. Okay, you, yeah. Did you tested three and found that four worked better? Yeah, huh. I just. And what did you make the windmill out of? What, pro what did materials did you use? Uh, I used a, a bicycle frame and a pulley and plastic pipe, wooden poles. We have a picture of that. Can we have the next slide? Yeah. Is that the windmill? And, and, so, and that windmill, what, what, it worked? When, when the wind blows, it rotates and generates how much electricity? Chop of what? And so that, that lit, that lit a, a light for the house? How many lights? Uh, four bulbs and two radios. Wow, yeah. And so... <laughs> Next slide. So who's that? This is my parents holding the radio. <laughs> so, so what did they make of it? You were 14, 15 at the time, and uh, what did they make of this? They were impressed? Yeah. And so what, what's your, what are you going to do with this? Um, what, 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 what do you, I mean, do you want to build another one? Yeah, I want to build another one to pump water and irrigate, irrigation for crops. So this one would have to be bigger? Yeah. How big? Uh, I think it will produce more than 200 volts. So, so that, that would produce irrigation for the entire village? Yeah. Wow. And so you're talking to people here at TED to, to get people who might be able to help in some way to, to realize this dream? Yeah, if they can help me with my videos, yeah. And, 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 and as you think of your life going forward, you're 19 now, do you, do you picture continuing with this stream of working in, in energy? Yeah. I'm still thinking to work on energy. Wow. Yeah. William, it's, it's a real honor to have you at the TED conference. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Right. William.